This is Retro Sports Radio. Visit RetroSeasons.com for more sports history. Today's game for 
Washington, Hibbertson, and Batty for New York, Shirley, and Howard. And the best battery of them all, baseball and Valentine beer, the Chris Professor. A doubleheader tomorrow with the Senators. First game starting at 1.30, the Decoration Day doubleheader. Plenty of good seats available. Judge Dobbs and Pete Ramos will be pitching for the Senators with Ralph Terry and Art Dittmar. They started for New York. After a three-day trip to Baltimore, the Yankees return next weekend with the Boston Red Sox. Next Friday night, Saturday afternoon, and a doubleheader a week from the day with the Red Sox. Next Saturday afternoon will be a ladies' day. Then come the White Sox for four games in four days. Monday night, Tuesday afternoon. Wednesday night, Thursday afternoon. June 6th, 7th, 8th, and 9th. And then the Indians, Friday night, the 10th, Saturday afternoon, the 11th, and a doubleheader on Sunday, June 12th to wind up the home fan. Billy Gardner. Land from New London, Connecticut. Hitting 300. 42 for 140. 300 on the season, but he went into uh, the week second hitting at a 435 clip. The pitch from Curley is high, ball one. He had one out of three last night. Curley's delivery, high and inside for ball two. Curley making his sixth appearance. He has a record of one and one. This is his third start. Red Sox beat him 7-1 in his first appearance at Boston. Then he relieved three times. Getting credit for went over Washington and relieved May 13th. The 2-0 delivery. That's outside for ball three. At Kansas City, he was uh, relieved by Gaber in the sixth inning. He'd given up three runs. And Gaber was credited with a win. Both sides. And the pitch. In there, frame one. Three one count. Gurley's next pitch is just outside the ball four and Gardner walks. Coming to bat is Dan Bilbeck. Bilbeck batting 221. He's had four out of his last ten times at bat, however, which is a 400 pace. Gurley delivers, and Bilbeck takes high outside for a ball. One ball, no strike. Seems to be aiming at ball instead of uh, firing it in there. Didn't seem to be quite loose yet. Now the delivery. That's a low one inside. Ball two. Two balls, no strike. McDougal walked over to say something to Curly. Taking no time. Taking a few deep breaths. Now into the stretch. Gardner leading away from first. The delivery. In there for a strike. Good one. Two balls, one strike. Ellis Clary coaching at third. Sam Mealy at first. McDougal shortened up at third. Gardner leads away from first. And the pitch to the left-hand batter is way outside. Ball three, three and one. Three balls, one strike. Now Joe Paparella is pointing to something. Not in the dugout, but I think. Over. Maybe it was to the dugout. 
Now he's throwing somebody out. Somebody's got in the heave hole in the Washington dugout. Somebody got the finger. And uh, we'll have to find out who it was a little later. He was riding Paparella. Joe warned him and then uh, warned him and then ran him. Three balls, one strike. Early to the set and the pitch and uh, strike two. Full count. We'll have to check to find out who it was. He never did come out of the dugout. Three balls, two strikes. Billy Gardner leading away. Stretched by Turley. There goes Gardner. The pitch is outside. Ball four. Go back walk. Gardner moves to second. Two on. Nobody out. And here's Bob Allison. Hitting 320. On the season. Since May 22nd. He's at six for 25. out of three last night. Going into last night's game, he had been uh, in a slump, hitting in a 182 pace over the previous week. Nobody out in two arms. Bob Curley's pitch is high for a ball. One ball, no strike. Jim Lemon on deck, and Armin Killebrew to follow. fighting uh, for control here in the first inning. The one nothing pitch. Swung on to high pop foul. May fade out of play. It's over near the center of the dugout and is out of play. Dropping in behind the dugout a couple of rows. The 1-1 one, one count. Prisoner was the man thrown out of the game. Senator Scott Prisoner uh, Cleveland, and the Indians have gotten him from Cincinnati. One ball, one strike. Gardner leading away from second. Go back from first. Nobody out. Bob Curley to the stretch. The pitch is bunted and it's foul to the right of the plate. Strike two. One and two. The Yankees were not playing for a bunt. And Allison crossed tro- them up for the bunt down the first baseline. A one-two count. off second, Bill Beck off first, here's the pitch, curve is outside, count is 2-2. Two-two. Curly has always had a problem in, in coordination. Certain days, he gets himself coordinated, he's uh, pretty good. He's forcing the ball up there right now. Two balls, two strikes, runners lead away from first and second, nobody out. And the pitch to Allison. Just in there for call strike three. Got the inside corner. Allison hadn't left the plate yet, but now he moves away. Now here's Jim Lemon. Lemon batting 239, but he's had 10 homers and 27 runs batted in. Tied for the league lead in homers and second in the league in RBI. Jim had one out of three last night. Went into the game last night with uh, a weak average of 261, six for 23. Gardner leading off second, Bill Beck off first. Hits the right hand batter, swung on and missed strike one. Nothing in one. One strike. 
Carmen Killebrew on deck. Curly taking his time. Dives into the stretch. Jardin again leading away from second. Still back from first. Curly fires away. Curveball low outside. The count is one and one. One ball, one strike. Shaded a little short left. The kids will deep driving the line. Early again to the stretch. Runners leading away from first and second. And the pitch. Swung on and fouled off right at the plate. Strike two. One and two. One ball, two strikes. Curly goes to the dog bag. Lemon had stepped out of the batter's box for a moment. Back in now. Digs in. Feet well spread. Bent knees, leans over from the waist. The runner's leading away from first and second. Bob Curly stepped off the rubber, and the runners move back. Now Curly is back on into the stretch. Gardner moving off second. Bill back off first. Here's the pitch to Jim Lemon. Curve low outside. Ball two. Two-two. Two balls, two strikes. Sam Neely watching Scourn is playing behind Bill Beck. Watching Richardson and Kubek for Gardner leading away from second. Now the stretch and the 2-2 pitch is swung on to high top foul may fade out of play and it will behind the Yankee dugout. That remains 2-2. Darren Howard has gone over. Double header tomorrow, first game at 1.30. Doubleheaders, of course, start at two. A couple minutes past two. Two balls, two strikes on Jim Lemon. Gardner and Dobeck leading away from second and first, respectively. Curly ready, and the pitch to Lemon. Swung on foul back above it. Journey walked out in front of the rubber now. The ball's at the dirt. Now he's back in the pitching position. Lemon digs in. Gardner and Dobeck, both of whom walk, leading away from second and first. One out, the 2-2 two -two count on Big Jim. Bob Curley delivers the curve. It's in there for call strike three. And Lemon didn't like the call. Two down now, and here's Harmon Gillibrew. Gillibrew sidelined earlier this season with a cold uh, leg muscle. During his 21st game, batting 257. He's had uh, six out of his last 27. Smashed the double here last night, a long drive to left. Great power. Gardner and Dobeck leading away now from second and first. Bob Curley getting ready to pitch to Gillibrew. Outfield deep, and they're playing him straight away. Bob into the stretch. And the pitch. Fastball swung on and missed. Strike one. Nothing in one. He can whip that bat. And 
Again, the stretch by Turley. Gardner leading away from second. Bill Beck from first. Here's the pitch. It's a curve and stays inside. One and one. Julio Beck there on deck. Steps out of the batter's box for two seconds. Drives back into hitting position. Early to his stretch. The runners lead away from first and second. And the pitch. Fastball swung on and missed. Strike two. One and two. And that one in there. One ball, two strikes. Moves off second. Bill Beck off first. The stretch by Turley. Here's the pitch. Curveball high. And the count is 2-2. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Stretch by Turley. The runners lead away from first and second. Here's the pitch, and Killebrew takes it high for ball three. Full count. Gardner and Dobek will be off and running with the pitch. Three balls, two strikes. Stretched by Turley, Gardner and Dobeck ready to go. There they go, and the pitch is low for ball four, and the bases are loaded. They lost him after being ahead of him. So three men are aboard, and here's Julio Becker, batting 250 on the season. Went into last night's game uh, with a weak average of 280, and had eight for his last 29. Stand batter up with three men aboard. Three men lead away. The pitch to back there. Swung on line out the left. Dirt coming fast and catches it for the out. And the side's retired. Julio back there. Lines up to serve in left field. No runs. No hits, no errors, and three men left on. Then of the first half, the first inning, Washington nothing, and New York coming to bat. Seven years old, soon to be 28. 
started out the majors with the Tigers. He was with them in 1956 briefly. And eventually went to Cleveland. And he was with the Indians in 1958 in 14 games. He won six and lost six. And he went with Washington uh, and the last year. Six to two back is inside. He was with Toronto most of last year. Won three and lost one. I beg your pardon, he was with Toronto briefly last year, uh, won three and lost one, and he 31 games for Washington, won two and lost four. He used to like being released. The pitch is in there for strike. Bruce Jordan's up at third. The pitch to Tony, swung on, hit by Jello Bruce, down the left field line for a base hit. Tony tried to go for two. Here's Lemon's throw, and Kubek is out of second. Lemon to Gardner. Kubek out trying to stretch his single into a double. Lemon to Gardner. Kubek with Killebrew drawn in. Hit a hard shot down the line past Killebrew. But was out trying to go for two. Lemon to Gardner. Who's hitting 309 on the season and has been hitting much better of late. Went into this past week with a weekly average of 385. Mickey Mantle right now takes it inside. Mantle batting 231. Woody Schick picked, swung on, hit into right field, and it's in there for a base hit. Allison tossing it back in to Gardner. Mantle slices a single to right. Kubek, who was out trying to stretch his single into a double, has uh, gotten 10 uh, base hits leading off in the ball game. In the 24 games in which he has batted in the leadoff position, he also walked twice leading off in the ball game. Roger Maris takes the strike. Maris hitting 318 for the season. He's had six hits in his last 16 at bat. The pitch is swung on, hit foul down the left field line, out of play. In the upper deck, two strikes, nothing in two. The outfield is shading Maris towards left and center and left, but they're almost right away right. They don't figure Maris to pull him. Curve is swung on and missed strike three. Maris strikes out. Now Elston Howard coming up, batting 260. Seventeen through the twenty-third, Howard hit at a 385 pace, five to thirteen. During his past week and three games, he had two for eight. Two fifty average. Two men out now, man along first, no score, first inning. Woody six quick, swung on, fouled off out of play to the right of the plate, hits the upper deck, rebound to the playing field. leading Boston one to nothing down to the first inning. First game for double header and Pittsburgh leads Philadelphia two to nothing down to the first inning. Now the pick outside ball one one and one. Mantle bluff to delay steal of second. One ball one strike. Woody kick into the stretch. Mantle with a short lead. The pick it fouled off as Howard. Took the pitch. The ball curved right in on the handle. Now 
competitor. There goes Mickey, and the ball is swung on and hit through the hole between third and short to left field. Man will turn second, head for third, and goes on in. Throw goes to second base. Man will break into second, pulled uh, the shortstop over, and Howard hit right through the hole. Now Bob Serve comes up. Runners on first and third, two out. Uh, 279 on the season. The week of May 17th through 23rd, he hit at a 412 pace, 7 for 17. Batting 270 on the season. He's only had three hits during the past week. 17 at bat. The pitch upside, ball one. Strikes, two outs. Mantle leads off third. Howard off first. The pitch to serve is in there for a strike. You know, people like to replay an inning and say, if this hadn't happened, if that hadn't happened. Actually, Kubek hadn't tried to go to second. The inning might have been over. The pitch swung on, fouled off to the right of the plate. The reason is that Kubek stayed on first. He might have even gone to third on Mantle, single to right, but Maris striking out one out. Howard's ball would have been a double play ball the way they would have played it. Assuming perfect handling. Here's the pick. The low outside, 2-2 two, two count. Sometimes it works around the other way, you know. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. You can never figure those things, though, because you pick differently in different situations. Runners leading away from first and third. The 2-2 two, two pick. Swung on, hit foul. Out of play in the lower stands behind the Yankee dugout. Up underneath the mezzanine. Bounce to short. A big hopper to Baldy. Slips the garden of forcing Howard. The side's retired. Both teams threaten in the first inning and fail to score. No run for New York. Three hits. No errors. For the Senators and two Yankees left on. At the end of an inning, Washington nothing, New York nothing. Baltimore leading Boston, one to nothing, ten of an inning and a half. Barber and Sullivan, they're playing a doubleheader. Cleveland at Detroit in the first game. It'll be Hawkins against Mossy. Chicago, Kansas City. The latest start, playing one game. Pittsburgh leading Philadelphia, two to nothing, ten of an inning and a half. Law against Robert. Mazeroski has just homework for Pittsburgh in the last or second to make it at least three nothing. Milwaukee, Cincinnati, we'll find Willie pitching against Cook. San Francisco at St. Louis, Jones against Jackson, Los Angeles at Chicago, Padres against Cardwell. A doubleheader tomorrow, game time, 1.30. Hope that you'll be on hand, plenty of seats available. It'll be Sobs and Ramos against Terry and Dittmar. Right now, we pause for station identification. You are tuned to 1460 on the radio dial. This is WOKO, Albany, New York. Time on the WOKO clock is... 29 minutes before 3, the current temperature is 73 degrees. In the first half of the second inning, it'll be the bottom third of the Washington order. Earl Batty, Jose Valdez-Dielso, and Hal Wittichick. Bob Curley walked the bases loaded in the first inning. Struck out two and got the last man on the line drive to left. The pitch to Batty. Misses, ball one. Little outside. Batty hitting 225. Now the pitch. Swung on and missed. Strike one. One and one. Red Sox are here next Friday night, Saturday afternoon, and doubleheader a week from the day. Fastball high in the count of two and one. Bob Lane 
James Ford swings to his windup and the pitch. Swung on, top foul, out of play to the right of the plate, into the lower stand. Stood up on the seat and reached for the ball. That's a dangerous thing to do. You start to lean with it, yeah. <laughs> Find up face to face with the concrete. The 2 2 pitch. Swung on, say fly ball into short left center. Here's Mantle coming on fast and makes the catch. Actually, he went all in behind Kubek and in front of Sir. Came a long way to get it. Bob didn't quite make it. And neither could Kubek. And here's Jose Valdi Bielso, V A L D I V I E L S O, whose father years ago played some football at Boston University. From Matanzas, Cuba. Right hand hitter. Curly six looks out. Trail time inside. Ball one. Jose has been an organized ball since 1953. This would make the seventh year. But he sure has moved a lot. Early's next pitch. Swung on, hit drop it is short. One hop. Two back to his right. Grabs it, throws to first. And there's two away. While Woodichick is coming up, we'll check. Uh, Val did also now in uh, seven seasons. And uh, remember this, uh, in, uh, obviously in certain years he played a different club. He played with Lubbock in 1953. In 1954 he was with Charlotte, Rock Hill, and Lubbock. In 1955 he was with Charlotte and Washington. In 1956 he was with Washington and Louisville. In 1957 Indianapolis. 1958, Phoenix in Minneapolis, and 1959, Washington and Miami. Woody kicked back right-handed, takes the pitch inside for a ball. He's always been a very slick glove man, but never was able to hit uh, well enough to really stay in the majors. But he just might uh, pick up in that regard. Here's the pitch, spin for strike. One ball, one strike. What is it? Curly comes in with a fastball swung on and missed strike two. What is it? Wound up with the bat that time to swing. It's a hard thing to do against the fastball. You start winding up on a fastball and you're in trouble. You better hold that bat at the ready. The count is 2 2. We're in the second inning, and those kids might say Washington ain't got nothing, and the Yankees ain't got nothing. Sometimes the big kids say that. The 2 2 delivery. Swung on and missed. Strike three, and the side's retired. And still ain't got nothing, and the Yankees ain't got nothing. No runs, no hits, no errors, no one left on. At the end of an inning and a half, Washington, as I said, ain't got nothing, and the Yankees ain't got nothing. And I tell you, when you will have something, and that is when you enjoy the crisp professor, Valentine beer. A beer that's truly light, smooth, and delicious as a beer can be. Valentine beer and the crisp professor. It is truly light, but there's more to it than that. Valentine adds something to its lightness. Flavor. Man, no sense of having lightness and got flavor. Valentine beer is a light beer with true lager flavor. That means it's as light as you like it, but it still delivers all the downright delicious lager beer flavor you want. And that's what makes it the crisp refresher. So treat yourself to some smooth, delicious Valentine. The largest selling beer in the East, from Maine to Florida. It's a treat that when you have it, you know you've got something. Now the last half of the second inning. Bill Sharon hitting six in the order. 
Goff, McDougal, and Richardson to follow. Moose down to 279. From May 17th through the 23rd, he hit it at 120 pace, 3 for 25. And since last Tuesday, he only had three hits. 19 times at bat. He takes the strike. The one strike delivery. It's in there. Strike two. Nothing in two. No balls. Two strikes. Two strike pitch. It's inside for a ball. One and two. And the delivery. Fouled off over the Yankee dugout. Moose is taking the pitch and the ball hits the uh, handle of the bat. There's a good possibility that in the next couple of days or so, when Casey gets back, he may rest Mantle and Sharon. Mickey's knee is still terribly sore. The pitch swung on, grounded to third. Gillibrew up with it. Goes on to first in time. And Mickey is going to have been in a bad slump. Off in his timing, he can't uh, get leverage. Moose is just playing off in his timing and pressing. Now, Gil McDougall. Hitting 259 on the season. But for the week of May 17th through the 23rd, he hit it a 348 pace and has had five hits in his last four games. Takes the curveball, the last side, ball one. The one nothing pitch. The curve is in there for a strike, one and one. Who's a big fellow, 6'3, 195. Has the ball, it really moves. Sharp breaking stuff. Live fastball. The one two pitch to McDougal, change up, two ball outside, 2 2. Two balls, two strikes. Delivery outside for ball three, three and two. Bobby Richardson on deck. They give Gill a lot of room in left center. Lemon straight away left. Bill Beck shaded to right center. Allison straight away right. And the payoff pitch is inside. Ball swept in on him. McDougal walk. Flick fielding Bobby Richardson, hitting 235 on the season. The week May 17th through 23rd, he hit 318, 7 for 22. He had three base hits and uh, 10 times at bat for the first three days last week. Nothing for six in the last two ball games. One out, McDougal on first. Now the pitch. Swung on ground at the third. Gillibrew up there nicely. Throws to second for one. Back on the first too late. Gillibrew grabbed that ball right on the line. Forcing McDougal to second. Gardner throw to first. Nowhere near in time to get uh, Bob Shirley gets to come up in the inning. He's had two for five this season, batting 400. No score. It's the last for the second. Relatively shallow, shaded toward right, center and right, straight away left. With a chick to the end of two innings to play. No score with the Yankees owning the only three hits in the game, all in the first inning. 
Two back out, stretching a single into a double, trying to. So the hits uh, were wasted, and the Senators wasted three bases on balls in the first inning. The doubleheader tomorrow with the Washington Senators starts at 1.30. Dobbs and Ramos against Perry and Bitmar. Then the Yankees are here next weekend with the Boston Red Sox next Friday night, a ladies' day Saturday afternoon, and a doubleheader next Sunday. One to nothing, ten to three innings. Cleveland nothing, Detroit batting in the first inning. In the National League, Pittsburgh six, Philadelphia nothing, ten to two and a half innings. Milwaukee two, Cincinnati batting in the first inning. Eddie Matthews at his tenth homer, one on. San Francisco nothing, St. Louis batting in the first inning. It's the first of the third, and the first man up in the batting order. Leadoff man, Billy Gardner. Bill Beck on deck, and Allison to follow. Gardner drew a pass in the first inning. Bob Curley. Making his sixth appearance and third start of the year. Delivers a fastball lined over third down the left field line. Should be an after extra bases. Serve plays the rebound. Gardner turns first and eases into second with a stand-up double. The first base hit for Washington, an extra base hit. Billy Gardner's eighth two-bagger. Gardner on second, nobody out. And Dan Bill back up. Allison to follow. Curley, who uh, had uh, some arm trouble earlier in the year, has not gone past uh, five and a third innings. Journey to the stretch, Gardner leading away from second. The pitch to the left hand batter, curveball, high, ball one. Field toward right, center and right. Straight away left. Two back trying to hold Gardner close. Curly delivers to Bill Beck, who swings and fouls it back upstairs. Strike one, one one. A large uh, group of youngsters here today. I don't mean in the one single group, you know, like the Yankee Juniors. I mean uh, the youngsters brought to the game by their parents, boys and girls alike. The 1-1 one, one pitch. Swung on, hit foul down the left field line. Out of play, fly ball. A 1-2 count on Dan Dobek. with a good lead off second. Now the one-two pitch and Dobek swings and sits, hits a fly ball to left. Serve backing up under it. Gardner at second to tag the catch. He starts the third and holds up. The throw goes right into Gill. Small player will draw a throw when he can. It'll be that one time, you know, then the percentages where the throw will bounce by somebody. It'll be a wild throw and change the situation around. You're always hoping for it, so you draw the throw even though you have no intention of actually going over unless it is a bad throw. Here's Bob Allison, who looked at a third strike in the first inning. Jim Lemon to follow. Now hitting right-hand batter. 
Curley delivers, and Allison looks at a curve. It's in there. Strike one. Nothing in one. Another curve is swung on, hit in the air to deep center. Mantle now getting under it. Ball fades a little. He makes the catch, and Gardner holds the second. The wind uh, has uh, several different directions. Looking at the right field, the flags are blowing out that way. Looking at left field, they're blowing out that way. Looking at the center field, and the old glory is sort of blowing straight in. Two outs, and the batter is Jim Lemon. Armand Killebrew on deck. Lemon looked at a third strike in the first inning. Big Jim. Six foot five right hand batter. Awaits the pitch. Curly delivers it. High ball one. Tempted curve. Didn't break much. First to the third, Billy Gardner on second base, two down. And Jim Lemon crouches. Bob Curley ready. Now the pitch, fastball swung on and foul back to the screen. Strike one, one and one. Lemon, who is six five, crouches a bit, and now when he swings, he's raising up. Good lift on the ball, and he connects. That pitch was almost in his alley. One ball, one strike. Curly again to the stretch. Gardner moves off second. Bob's delivery. Curve is swung on. It's a high pop-up that Bobby Richardson gets under. Waiting and makes the catch, and the side's retired. No runs, one hit, no errors, one left on. Gardner open with a double and is stranded. The end of two and a half innings. Washington nothing, New York nothing. trying to stretch it into a double. Mantle followed with a single, and Howard had a single, but the Yankees did not score. Left-hander Hal Woodishick, ready to pitch. Carmen Killaboo shortened up at third the way he was in the first inning when Kubek rode the ball by him. The pitch is in there for a strike. Nothing in one. Sander again delivers sidearm fastball inside and counts one and one. One ball, one strike. And the one one pitch. Low outside, ball two, two and one. Earl 
Betty called out to uh, the mound. What is she going to chat with him? Two balls, one strike. issued by Wittershick. Mickey Mantle steps in. Roger Maris on deck. Mantle batting right-handed against Wittershick. Sanders pitch, swung on, missed, strike one, nothing in one. Mickey has a look at Cressetti. What a shake to the stretch, and the pitch. Low, ball one, one and one. Mantle. No score. It's the last of the third. Mickey steps out now. So holler to him. Two balls, one strike. Mantle back in. What is it to the stretch? Two back for the lead. The pitch swung on. It's a high foul off to the left of the plate and out of play. A 2-2 two -two count. strikes. Left-hander Hal Wittishick into the stretch. Two back with a short lead off first. The pitch and Mantle takes it low inside. Ball three. Three and two. A full count. Stretch by the left-hander, two back with the lead. The pitch swung on, grounded, foul down the third baseline. Six to the stretch, two back with the lead. Throw to first, and Tony's back. Again, we're set to go. The stretch, two back with the lead. The three-two pitch. Swung on and missed strike three. The throw down is into center field, and two back with started back to first. Stops and goes on to second. Benny fired the ball to the bag. Nobody was there. Gardner couldn't quite get over. Two back was trapped. He was running. Stopped halfway between first and second, tried to go back to first, and then turned back around and went on. Kubek advances to second as Mantle strikes out. And here's Roger Maris. 
second strikeout for Wardishick. Maris struck out in the first inning. The pitch. Roger takes the curve inside for a ball. The error on the play is given to Gardner for not covering in time. Here's the pitch. Swung on, foul back out of play. A 1-1 one, one count on Merritt. delivers. Rod swings and misses. Strike two. One and two. Maris is swinging a lot at the motion of Woodyshick. Eddie Lopat used to be great for that. He'd swing at his motion. He changes speeds off of a motion. Here's the pitch. Swung on and missed. Strike three. Maris strikes out for the second time. Now here's Elston Howard, who's single to left in the first inning. No score, last of the third. Woodyshick wants to talk to Batty. Howard uh, had five for 13 the week May 17th through 23rd. For 385 average, had two out of eight, or three out of nine, including his first time up today uh, during his last uh, game this past week. What is Chicletti? Delivers to Howard, swings and bounces it to third. Killebrew throws on over to first in time, and that retires the side. No runs, no hits, no errors, and one, uh, one error, I'm sorry, on the play at second. And one left on. At the end of three innings, Washington, no runs, one hit, one error. And four left on. New York, no runs, three hits, no errors, and four men left on base. This is a perfect time for Valentine, so how about pouring yourself a tall, foaming glass full and enjoy the light beer with true lager flavor? Valentine beer, the crisp refresher. On the Valentine School Board, Baltimore leads Boston 1 0, end of 4. Sullivan against Barber. Detroit leads Cleveland 1 0, end of 1. Mossy and Hawkins. Chicago, Kansas City later. National League, Pittsburgh 6, Philadelphia nothing, end of 3. Law against Roberts. Chris Short in relief from the second. Mazarovsky at a homer. Milwaukee 2, Cincinnati nothing, end of an inning and a half. Willie and Hook, Matthews at a homer with one on. Giants Cards, scoreless end of an inning and a half. Jones and Jackson. Dodgers Cubs, scoreless end of an inning and a half. Padres and Cardwell. The next voice you'll hear to carry on with you will be that of Phil Rizzuto after we pause for station identification. You are tuned to 1460 on the radio dial, WOKO, Albany, New York. 73 degrees at two and one half minutes after the hour or three on the WOKO clock. Ready to go in the top of the fourth inning, scoreless ball game, the Yankees and the Senators. Leading off for Washington, Harmon Killebrew. First pitch to Harmon, inside ball one, brushed him back. Killebrew walked in the first inning. On deck is Julio Becker. Curley's next pitch is high inside, ball two. Two and nothing to count. trying to get back in the groove after missing quite a few games because of a pulled muscle in his leg. Swings and fouls the pitch completely out of Yankee Stadium. That's one of the highest fouls I've ever seen. Swung at a high pitch and got underneath it. He sort of uppercut at a ball when he swings. One reason he strikes out so often, but another reason why he gets such high-powering drives when he does hit them. 
Do him on the count. Nobody out, nobody on the top of the fourth. Kerr hit him right in the back. Hit Killebrew right in the back. Armand is on. Hit by a pitch ball. And here's Julio Becker, who lined out to left field in the first inning with the bases loaded. Bob Serve making a nice running play to end the bottom of the first inning. Curley has now walked three, all of them in the first inning, and hit one man. He has given up one base hit. That a double to Gardner in the third inning. Garland holds first against Killebrew. Here's the stretch. The pitch is a curve on the outside corner for a called strike. Hit on the ground a second. Richardson to two back for one. Back to first. Double play. For the Yankees, their 37th double play of the year. Last night, three double plays by the Yankee infield. Took Jim Coates out of a jam each time. Kubek and Richardson have been teaming up real well all year. So it's two out here's Earl Batty who flies to center field his first time up. Takes the pitch in there, strike call. Batty got off to a real good start in the early part of the year. He's down to 225 now. One strike pitch, low curve. A little bit high ball, one, one, and one. Nobody on. The fastball is a strike called. One ball, two strikes, two out. Early into the short windup. Low curve, line to center field, a base hit. Batty timed that one perfectly. Just waited for the ball to break. A line single to center field. That's the second hit off Curley. And it brings up Jose Valdivioso, who bounced out to the shortstop in the second inning. Jose changed his stance last winter and hit better than he'd ever hit any previous year. So he's getting another shot at the shortstop position on the Washington club. He's been up and down quite often. By Shirley. The pitch is low ball one. There's never been any question about Valdivioso's fielding ability. It's always been his batting that has held him back. Here's the stretch. Pitch low outside, ball two, two and nothing. in the top of the fourth inning. Batty at first. Garland playing in back of the runner. Here's the stretch. This is a tight call. Fastball just below the letters. Not a bad crowd here today. See the second game of a four-game series. Big doubleheader tomorrow. Same two clubs. Starting at 1.30 p.m. Here's a 2-1 pitch. A foul. Well, well, well. I got a foul ball. How do you like that? Two and two of the count. Get away from Sam Neely. 
Two balls, two strikes, and two out. Pitch is a curve a little bit high, ball three. Three balls, two strikes, two out. Batty leading off first base. The pitch is hit to uh, center field. Mantle going back under it now and makes the catch. Ball was hit well. And for Washington in the top of the fourth inning, no runs on one base hit. No Yankee errors. One man left to score at the end of three and a half innings. Washington nothing and the Yankees nothing. Did you ever see a game with just one team? A baseball game, that is. Well, of course not. Naturally, take two teams to play a game. And it's the same with beer. Lightness is fine, but that's just half of it. To really refresh, a beer must have lightness plus flavor. And that's where the crisp refresher Ballantine beer comes in. Proves to more people every day that a beer can be light and still give you all the honest-to-goodness lager beer flavor you want. Yes, sir, Valentine's the light beer with two lager flavor. That satisfying combination of lightness and flavor makes Valentine the crisp refresher. So if lightness alone won't do for you, and if you want a beer with flavor, too, then, mister, just make the good old three-ring sign and ask the man for Valentine. Enjoy the crisp refresher, the largest selling beer in the East from Maine to Florida. the other day, and he said that Todd is a kid that can't miss. 
He's very impressed with his easy motion and delivery. One strike on McDougal. Fastball low outside, ball one. One and one. Pitches hit on the ground to third. Harmon Killebrew up with the ball. Over to Beck there for the out. And that's the first time the Yankees have been retired. One, two, three in the ball game. Nothing across in the bottom of the fourth inning. And the score at the end of four for the Yankees. The Yankees have no runs on three hits and no errors. Washington, no runs. Two hits and one error. Now this is Bob Delaney, and we're on the go again with the rest of this afternoon's ball game brought to you by the Atlantic Refining Company and your neighborhood Atlantic dealer, the folks who help keep your car on the go. Easy chance to serve. 
Mr. Godrich. Has it. Go ahead, your way. And uh, the rookie center fielder, Dan Bobek. B O B B E K. Hitter. Move him uh, outfield around foot right. Another sign just went up on the uh, Yankee big board out there back to right center field. This new Yankee ticket outlet at Weber Harbor Stores. That's in addition to the uh, ticket office in the Mezzanine Grand Central and the one here at the stadium. Change the pace is outside, ball one. For a couple of years, you know, he used the no windup, which he got from Lawson. And he's not going back to a full windup, but it's sort of halfway between. Pitch is low outside, ball two. I know that Bob feels that he's more relaxed by using some sort of a windup. His pitching coach, Eddie Lopez, feels the same way. But they don't want him to use a full windup because they wish nothing to get uh, in the front of his eyes and his target. When he used to use a full wind-up before he went to the no wind-up, uh, the full wind-up just to just his head to cut back it off the plate and cover that into his wildness. Two nothing tips. Pass ball high inside, ball three. Two out. Nobody on. Bob walks in the first inning and settle down. Now he's in a hole, three and all. Delivers over in one. Well, at least that is a sign. Lock deals high outside ball four. First man he's walked since the first inning. Now the fourth man he's walked in the game. I just get uh, Bob Allison up, right hand hitting right fielder who was the American League rookie of last year. They call it the sign it off the campus of the University of Kansas. After it shaded around to the left. There's a high foul that is hit down the left field line and into the stand. Like one. Allison has been studying uh, about going back in the winter and doing some more college work at Kansas, but uh, he hasn't as yet. Art Dittmar of the Yankees is very definitely, he takes a winter term every year. He's on his way toward uh, his degree. Dittmar is attending American International College at Springfield. High outside, ball one. Ball the strike. Two yeah, outs on this first, but it's going anything. can make when he is in position with a man on his first base, uh, that is a move, and that's it, is the head motion. We had two balks out here uh, in the second game with Baltimore. One was called on Dittmar because he twisted his shoulder, which is a move to decoy the runner. And the other balk was called on Wilhelm because he bent a knee. Right-handed throws to first. Kelly's set. 
delivers the runner goes as the fifth down to second base, and he's out. Power to Richardson, an attempted steal by Dovac. Allen made quite a throw because that was a change of base to tell he threw. He went down on the ideal pitch, but Howard has a great arm, and he showed it right there because he was uh, throwing at a disadvantage. When he let the ball go, I thought that the runner uh, was going to make two. Nothing across, and the score in the four and a half innings is Washington nothing and New York nothing. You know, sometimes the way your car performs can be downright embarrassing, especially if it's been stalling frequently or idling rough, or possibly doesn't have the get up and go you're accustomed to. But your trouble, you know, could be a dirty carburetor, a condition that can affect any car, old or new. Now, here's how it happens. Exhaust fumes and minute particles of dirt can get by your air cleaner and build up deposits inside along the lower carburetor wall. Even a small amount of these deposits can cause the throttle plate to feed the wrong mixture of air and gasoline to your engine. You get rough performance and actual gasoline waste. But a dirty carburetor is one embarrassment you can forget about if you use new Atlantic Imperial gasoline. You see, Atlantic Imperial actually goes to work cleaning out the deposits in your carburetor as you drive. What's more, it keeps your carburetor clean. What's more pleasure back into driving? So to end stalling, rough idling, and gasoline waste, due to a dirty carburetor, use Atlantic Imperial. The gasoline that cleans your carburetor and keeps it clean. To the bottom of the fifth inning, Bobby Richardson leading off for the Yankees. Then Bob Turley and Tony Kubek. Bobby Hitler's in one fifth of the plate. Now, the last nine. Totals at the end of five. 
Washington, no runs, two hits, one error. New York, no runs, three hits, no error. And before some other matters, we will pause for station identification. on the radio dial, W-O-K-O, Albany. Hector Lopez goes out to right field, replacing Roger Maris. Uh, 20 minutes before the game started, just as the Senators were concluding their batting uh, of their uh, infield and outfield, they lose Fungo back. Uh, put Maris on the back of his left leg. Uh, he started the ball game, but I would uh, have to hazard the opinion with Lopez going out there now that the area has gotten sore and the leg must be sick. But we will uh, get an official word on that. Bob Shepard, uh, who is back uh, after being part of the bride yesterday on the PIA, is talking about where to get tickets for the big games coming up the next two weeks. And you can get them at the Yankee Stadium every day of the season. The Yankees uh, Midtown office in the mezzanine of Grand Central Terminal. You can stop in at any one of the 12 conveniently located weapon houses on our clothing stores in the greater New York area, or you can order by mail. And if by mail, just send your name and address along with your check of money order to ticket manager, Yankee Stadium, Bronx 51, New York. Back seats, uh, still places 358, reserved seats at 250, taxes included. Please add 25 cents to your total order for mailing charge. And your tickets will be sent back to your pump. All right, North Four and Charlie now is going to take on Washington in the sixth inning. Allison, Lemon, and Killebrew, the big bat. And Allison hits the first pitch to pump fly to short left field. Serve comes charging in, charging in, and gets there for the off. One up, one away. is off the two, which is the third strike, pop the second. All these hitters here for Washington in the sixth inning, if they get their pitch, can uh, hit it tomorrow. Lemon is tied with Maris. Most homers, Ted. Remember that Hector Lopez is in right field. Mandel remains in center. Third is in left.
understand the official report that the marriage went out because his uh, left ankle began to stiffen up. The uh, fungal bat that accidentally struck him uh, was thrown by two claimants. And uh, the uh, thing we wanted to know from the training room is that Maris is expected to play tomorrow. Thank you, Ed. Rounds the ball off. I've got first base, strike right one.
to set the position of the runners in front and behind him delivers the fast ball on the outside to Andrew. Yankees. Low 
inside, ball two. Uh, Boston is down at Baltimore playing a double hunter. 
Chris Robinson in the sixth inning has homered for the Orioles with the two on. And at the end of six and a half, it is Baltimore fighting to hold on in first place. They're fine young players. Six. And the Red Sox won. Sullivan uh, pitching this one for Boston and Steve Barber for Baltimore. Dick Hyde, uh, who uh, wears glasses and throws with a submarine delivery, is coming in for one. At the end of three innings, first of a doubleheader, Cleveland at Detroit. It is three to two in favor of Detroit. Uh, all the runs have been a result of home runs. walks away and the manager also. And Dick Hyde takes over. End of an inning out of Kansas City. Score going to Chicago. Johnson for Kansas City is one nothing in favor of the Athletics. In the National League single game, Philadelphia is at Pittsburgh. At the end of six innings, it is Pittsburgh seven and Philadelphia four. The walk at Cincinnati is a two-two tie at the end of four and a half. Uh, San Francisco at St. Louis it is one nothing San Francisco and it's three and a half. And time is... Uh, now being called on there because of rain. At the end of four and a half innings, Los Angeles of Chicago is leading three to nothing. This matter accounted for the run for the home run with two on the fourth inning. Well, Dick Hyde taking over. There's the announcement by Bob Shepard. three-quarter underhand and underhand. You do not see that delivery too frequently. Two years ago, he was uh, one of the top relief men in the business. Come in and get you out. All right, here's the uh, status. The Yankees have uh, two runs in and made two nothing. Last the sixth inning, one man out. A runner third at the third base, down is up, the count is one and all, and it's up to Hyde to have responsibility no matter whether he walks in the strike or not or anything else. This is swung on and hit out to left field, and Lemon comes on and can't get it. Tries to stop it, the ball goes through it. And Donald is coming around second, he may try to come in. Let's see, Suzette, he brings him around third base, brings him around. Around, here's the relay, and he is out. The center fielder Dobby got over and got the ball. Threw it. Uh, Billy Gardner was in on the relay. I don't know whether the short stop ball, so was in on it too or not. And uh, Batty had him at the plate, so it's a simple from Cowan, and he's out trying to make it an inside the park home run. And Cazetti was bringing him in all the time. Gamble it would take a perfect relay to get him, and that's what happened. So a run is in, however, and it's three nothing on the eye for the moose and a triple. It was a hard line drive that Lemon tried to shoot straight to left field. And now it's Mike Dougal, and take the curve over for a call strike. Three nothing, Babe in New York. They set a fielder to the second baseman. I know I saw Gardner make the throw to the plate to bat it. I wasn't sure whether the, uh, because I was watching Suzetti's sign, whether the shortstop had thrown it on to the second baseman. But no, it was uh, eight to four to two. Two 
have nobody on. Keep your pitch. The car just outside. In case you may be wondering, friends, when the ball hit the left field, why the second baseman made the relay to the plate? The ball got through Lemon, and the shortstop was doing the thing he should. He was charging into left field, so in the event that he was needed out there, he just kept on going. Three two pitch, low inside ball four. And uh, then the center fielder came over. You see, the ball had gotten through the left field. The center fielder retrieved the ball in left center. And by the time he came up for the ball, the shortstop was uh, too deep to be practically useful, but the second baseman had alertly uh, come over uh, to be the relay man, and that was what it was. All right. One at first, based on both McDougal, here's Bobby Richardson, who is over two. That field is back in the right on, Bobby. They're giving him all of left center. Bobby swinging calls it off. Strike one. Nothing in one. No balls, one strike. Slow inside. Ball one. that ball from almost down on the ground. It's almost rarely seen delivered. One ball, one strike. There's a ground ball hit the third. Still, if we knock it down, the cover throws the second base in down for the fourth on my goal. Here's the cup, 3-1. Um, four hits. That's four on the wild pitch, no errors. And the total at the end of the set, 3-7-0 uh, for New York, and 0-3-1 uh, for Washington. Well, yeah, this should be a very um, apt time right now to pause the station identification. 1460 on the way to your dial, your station for music, news, and sports in the Dry City area. This is WOKO, Albany, New York. Current temperature is 73 degrees, two minutes before the hour of four. The first game, Boston down at Baltimore, is now at the end of seven. And it is Baltimore, the first place club now, six, and Boston one. Cleveland on the strength of Ben Jonas fourth inning home run. Got three and they fourth. And now leads the Detroit five to three. And that is the first of two. It is one nothing Kansas City over Chicago and of an inning. And the league time call at the end of six and a half innings. That's an official ball game. It is six six seven and Philadelphia four. And the five and a half single Milwaukee is Cincinnati two two. Three and a half, San Francisco one, St. Louis nothing. At the end, uh, five and a half, Los Angeles four, and Chicago nothing. The um, game, San Francisco, St. Louis, at the end of three and a half innings, is uh, being held up right now because of rain, and of course, uh, that is not an official game. All right, uh, Valdez of the Elso is pushed up, uh, takes the pitch inside for a ball. Curry had given him an inside pitch to start him with while I was checking the score, so the count is now two balls in those strikes. It is three nothing in favor of New York. Two nothing pitch is over for the strike. Benny Green is on deck to finally um, to hit for release Mr. Hyde. Seventh inning. Lavagetta has no choice but to go to his bench behind 3 0. There's a front effort uh, for a base hit that's fouled off back over to the visitor's dugout. Well, that's a bunch of hits today. They had three hits in the first inning, but they got nothing. 
Kubek got thrown out stretching. But then the last of the set, Mano, with an opposite field home run, woke them up. And it's two more. Tomorrow, 
Armstrong, Remus, Stodd, uh, will be the starters for Washington. Terry and Dittmar will be the starters for New York. And uh, then after uh, the double head of the Yankees go to Baltimore for three night games. And they're home Friday night. The Red Sox Saturday afternoon. And the double head of Sunday away from today. A tremendous week with the White Sox in for four games two up at night, Monday and Wednesday. The uh, Indians in for four games Friday night, uh, double Sunday. Sorry, just to sit to, to, to play down in that first place. They're not playing in the pole, the outfield is laid back in the right. Hit the high fly ball that the second baseman Billy Gardner is under out in very short right field. As the test is really out. One down, and here is Tony Kubek. One for two. nothing game when he let out the last of the six with a home run and the right field just as he did last evening. Third is good for a call second strike, just above the knees on the inside. Mickey Bisson has played out by Paparella a little bit about that. Two strikes on him. Popping. Delivers. And Mattel Clinton hits a high drive. Deep back on right field. Allison is back. He's waiting at the edge of the wall and makes the catch. So, nothing on short. And the score at the end of seven is New York 3 1.
into the windup. The next pitch. Inside, ball two. On the Atlantic scoreboard in the American League at the end of eight innings in the first game of a doubleheader, Baltimore leads Boston six to one. After four innings, Cleveland and Detroit are tied five five. Chicago and Kansas City at the end of two. The Athletics lead the White Sox one to nothing. Here's the two nothing pitch to Dobek. Six to strike, two and one. And the National League after six innings, the Pirates seven, the Phillies four. And the six, Milwaukee and Cincinnati are tied at two two. And the four, San Francisco and St. Louis tied at one one. Two one pitch. Swung out, a little pop up in the shallow left center field. Madeline serve above after it. Serve makes the catch for out number one. And the six innings, LA four. Chicago nothing. The game is now in the seventh inning. Bob Allison, the batter. And here's Phil Rizzuto. Mr. Allison is popped in the air in short left field. Kubek back, serve coming in. Kubek backing up, makes the catch in short left field. And that's two up and two down here at the top of the eighth inning. And it'll bring up Jim Lemon, who is called out on strike, popped to second, and the fly out deep to left field. the Yankees lead. Game two teams meet tomorrow in a big Memorial Day doubleheader starting at 1.30 p.m. <laughs> On deck is Harmon Killebrew. Curly's first pitch to Lemon is a curve in the dirt ball one. Settle down since the first inning when he walked three men. Last ball is lined to left field. There's a base hit. Jim Lemon lines a single over Kubek's head, and that's the fourth hit off Charlie in the ball game. It brings up Armin Killebrew, who's been on base each time, walked twice, and hit by a pitch ball. Against Lemon with two out here in the top of the eighth, and the again. The pitch is a little bit low, ball two, two or nothing. The Bob's having a little bit of trouble with Killebrew today. Trying to pitch a little extra careful to the slugging center to third baseman. Two balls, no strike. is Julio Becker. I feel deep and just about straight away on Killebrew. In fairly set position. Pitch is hit. Deep to left field. Way back there, but Kirby's all way in the upper deck. And Killebrew's standing with his hands on his hips halfway down the first base line. Just watch that ball curve ball. the ball, and when he gets hold of it, he hits him like the old Bambino. High and deep. The official paid attendance, 21,516, and the total including service meant 22,099. Two balls, one strike on Killebrew, two men out. Of the chest got two bags up with it over to Richardson for the fourth play. And that's all for Washington in the top of the eighth. No runs, one hit, no Yankee errors, one man left. The score at the end of seven and a half innings 
Yankees three and the Senators nothing. When you're off in your car and you want the engine to start right up, start smoothly. Two balls, one strike on Killigo. Two men out. And the pitch is hit on the ground of the chest. Got two back up with it. Over to Richardson for the fourth play. And that's all for Washington in the top of the eighth. No runs. One hit. No Yankee errors. One man left. The score at the end of seven and a half innings. The Yankees three and the Senators nothing. When you're off in your car and you want the engine to start right up to idle smoothly, you want it to get good performance while you're on the go. Many times, it's the little things that keep an engine running at its best, like a clean carburetor. Today's Atlantic Imperial gasoline is especially designed to clean your carburetor as you drive and to keep it clean. A clean carburetor means smoother performance and greater gasoline economy. Make every day a good day. Start off with Atlantic Imperial gasoline to keep your car on the go. 3-0 as we go to the last half of the eighth inning. The Yankees leading Washington as they try to make it two straight. Well, Al Paz, who has been in charge of the Yankees, has seen a fine pitching performance last night by Jim Coat. And up to this point, anyway, an equally fine performance by Bob Curley. In yeah, the first inning, you might not have given a chance for Curley being around this late in the ballgame. He walked the first two hitters in deep trouble, but managed to wriggle out of that jam, and since that time, has had uh, things pretty much his own way, getting the ball over the plate, getting a lot of uh, mileage out of a change-up curveball that he's been throwing, mixing it in with a fastball, but more important than anything, getting the ball over the plate. Actually, over the last uh, three or four ball games, the empty pitching staff, which appeared to be in pretty tough shape, has improved tremendously with performances by Ford, Coast, and now Curley. Ford and Curley are certainly key men as far as the Yankees' hopes in the 1960 pennant case are concerned. Let's ball one into Hector Lopez to replace Roger Maris in right field. Maris um, would get a rather tough uh, guy to do business and out made the switch. Ball two inside. It's hard to say would a kick, which is the correct pronunciation here. It's hard to say would kick. Stone. He got to it, and they had the possible shot for the double play, and 
He tried to throw it before he had it, and the ball scooted right out of his bare hand and rolled over towards third base. All hands are safe. No at second. Howard at first. Here's Bob serve. Here's Bob to short, struck out, and then doubled. A solid line drive that hit the base of the fence in the left field corner and kicked into the stand. Nobody out. Hits the serve. Curve low, ball one. This is law, ball two to nothing. Nobody out in the Yankees leading 3-0 here in the bottom of the eighth. Here Ken Hadley is on deck bringing a couple of bats. Bill Starrin, after that long run, trying to get an inside the park homer, feels a little sick to his stomach. And the case he's rather Ralph Hauck, who is managing the club in the absence of Casey Tangle, decided to rest the moose. Two picks. Strike three. He went after a high fastball. Didn't get it. That's one away. Wait a minute. Ken Hadley has started up there. Now comes back to the bench. And let's see what the story is here. Hadley was on deck swinging a couple of bats. realize with the ducks on the pond, men on base, he might want to get up there ahead, but we'll wait and see. Nobody has come out of the dugout as yet. Bill McDougal is coming out, but he's on deck. He's due to be the next batter after whoever is coming up to hit now. We see Hadley fingering his first baseman's glove, but we do not see anybody coming out of it. Yogi Bear! Pretty shrewd move by Ralph Hout. He can use Sarah as a pinch hitter and still put Hadley in the game at first base. Runners at first and second, one out. And Yogi, who's batting an E325 with a double four homers and 16 runs, batted in the batter. The pitch to Yogi, outside ball one. Darren had bounced to third, bounced to second, and then tripled to left field as Lemon tried to make a shoestring catch on a sinking liner, and as Moose tried to score all the way, he was thrown out on a fine relay. But I guess the run was a little bit too much for Darren. One ball, no strikes on Yogi. The pitch, the pitch is popped in the air to left field. Jim Lemon moving under it. Makes the catch for the second out. Clevenger picked Yogi away, and he tried to go that way, and popped out to short left field. Here's Gil McDougal, who's walked twice and bounced to third. 0 for 1. with a big lead at first base. Down at second, Hector Lopez. Now Billy Gardner runs over to run Lopez back. Two men are out. Yankees lead 3 nothing. Team 
two teams meet tomorrow in a Memorial Day doubleheader starting at 1.30. The curve, low outside, ball one. Remember, the Yankees are just one game behind in the all-important loss column. In other words, Baltimore, in first place, two and a half games over the Yankees, have lost 14. The Yankees have lost only 15. So that makes it a much closer race than it appears on paper. The pitch is a top foul out of play. One and one to count. Two out. The stretch and the pitch is top foul out of play and in the upper deck, strike two. One ball, two strikes. No plays lead to a second. Howard off first. The catch by Clevenger. The pitch is popped in the air to short right field. Gardner back. Allison in. And I had not be a collision, but Allison makes the catch just as Gardner viewed to his left at the last second. Oh, and Billy would have got the worst of that with big Bob Allison coming on. So for the Yankees in the bottom of the eighth. No run. No hit. One center there, two men left to score at the end of eight full innings. The Yankees three, the center is nothing, and we pause for station identification. You are here in the 1450 on the radio dial. This is WOKO, Albany, New York. 28 minutes and 20 seconds after the hour of four. Six to five at the end of five. Sigmund against Dembrock. Pearsall and Francona at home for Cleveland. Maxwell and Ted for Detroit. The White Sox have tied up Kansas City 1-1 one, one at the end of two and a half. More against Johnson. International League. The Pirates are leading the Phillies 7-5 to five at the end of seven and a half. Farrell against Green. Walters, Allison and Curry home for the Phillies. Maserati and Green for the Pirates. Milwaukee and Cincinnati tied 2-2 two -two at the end of six and a half. Willie against Hook. Matthews and McMillan have home in that one. The Giants and the Cardinals are tied 1-1 one -one at the end of four and a half. Jones against Jackson. And the Dodgers lead the Cubs 4 nothing at the end of seven. Padres against Moorhead. Duke Snyder home in the fourth with two on. Julio Garcia, who lined the left, hit into a double play and single the center lead. So takes the pitch low, ball one. for the Yankees. The pitch is over. Strike called one on one. One one pitch is outside ball two. Two on on deck is Earl Batty. Is it deep to right field? That one is gone. Out of this ball back for a home run. For Julio Becker. As he hit a high fastball into the right field seat. And many of you fans will remember that it was Julio Becker 
one pitch. Low outside, ball three. Three and one the count. On Hal Marazon, batting for Earl Batty. Here on the top of the ninth inning. Now the three one delivery is low ball four. Thromberry is coming out of the center of the dugout. They got some left-hand hitters on that bench. Rallo is still on deck. Hey, Thromberry, batting for Jose Valde de Ocho. Thromberry's batting 237, has two doubles, and three runs batted in. Nine for 38 on the year. A left-hand hitter. First base, talking with the first base coach, Sam Neely, is Hal Narazon. Ken Hadley, who took over for Starrin at first, is playing in back of the round. The Yankees lead 3-1 here in the ninth inning. Here's the stretch by Durham. The pitch is a strike call. He fired that fast ball right about belt high. Stretch by Durham. The pitch. Outside ball one. One one. Now it calls time and runs out to the mound. Now Ellie comes back in the catcher's box. One ball, one strike. Low working line, Durham out of the mound. To take plenty of time. Here's the trick. The trick is low ball two. Two and one the count. One thing for sure, it's always a throw on during the second. Never a dull moment. Leading off first. 2 1 pitch. Low inside ball three. Three and one to count. Gil McDougal walks over towards the pitcher's box, says something to Duran, and pounds his glove. Is foul back out of play. Three and two to count. Full count on the face on the. Yankees lead 3-1 here in the top of the ninth. Nobody out in a runner at first base. Going into that big, slow stretch. The pitch, way outside, ball four. That ball was about three feet outside. Now it had to go way out after it. Down to second goes Marathon. At first is Faye Thrumberg and here's Elmer Vallow. Vallow batting for Tech Clevenger. Nobody out. And the tying run at first base. Gil McDougal moves over to the mound. It's off with Durham. Howard now coming out to the mound. There is a possibility of a sacrifice here, but usually the visiting teams play to win the ball games, or at least try to win them, and they do not play for the tie on the road. Of course, the visiting team naturally would be on the road, but... 
see how Cookie Labaghetto, the skipper of the Senators, plays it. The situation, Senators have runners at first and second, nobody out. Ryan Gurn came on to relieve Bob Shirley after Shirley had fixed a brilliant game and had given up a lead-off home at the Julio Becker, leading off the ninth inning. And here's a stretch by Gurn. The pitch to Vallo. Strike a swing and a miss. Vallo almost fell down. He took such a hard cut. and won the count. The stretch and the pitch is outside ball one, one and one. We've got activity in both bullpens. In the Senators bullpen in the event they tie up the game and go into that training. They all move ahead of the Yankees and the Yankees to bat in the bottom of the ninth, and the Yankee bullpen, they have a couple of men loosening up. Here's the stretch. The pitch. It's a ground ball. Base still out the middle. And coming on to score is Maragon holding his second and strong day. stay in to play his shortstop in the event he is needed. So there's a fellow who uh, not too many days ago was wearing a Yankee uniform. El Mavallo, and he's come back to haunt him a little bit here today. And here's Billy Gardner. The Yankee hits there playing way in looking for the bunt. The stretch, the pitch is taken low inside ball one. A ball almost hit Gardner. Billy had squared around about the ball. Ken Hadley is way in at first base. And McDougal is in at third. Gill cannot come in quite as far as Hadley because then Stronberry would be able to steal the bag. 3-2, the Yankees lead. One ball, no strikes on Billy Gardner. Here's the stretch. The pitch. Inside ball, two. Two and nothing. Gardner looking over towards the uh, center of the bench. He's been looking at the third base coach to get him the sign. He's looking right at Cookie Lavaghetto. Two balls, no strikes on Billy Gardner. Nobody out. Runners at first and second. Here's the stretch. The pitch. Low ball three. Three and nothing. Strikes on Gardner. On Beck is Dan Bilbeck. Here's a stretch, the pitch. That call, the fastball ball down the middle. Three balls, one strike. Runners at first and second. It's a 3 2 ball game. And at the top of the ninth inning, the Yankees lead. Here's a stretch by Doran. The pitch. Is that is foul at the plate, strike two. It's a full count now on Billy Gardner. It was too close to pitch for Gardner to take. And it looked like Billy bent down a little bit. It could have been a little low. He's got to protect the plate. Three balls, two strikes now to count. Howard rubbing up a new ball. That last one attempt 
by Gardner, picked off Howard Foot. Three balls, two strikes, and nobody out. Hey, Thornberry leading off second. Billy Consolo off first. Here's the set by Durant. The kick. Allen's got ball four. The Yankees leading three to two, and Ralph Hogg is coming out of the Yankees dugout. Dan Dobek is due to be the batter, and then he'll be followed by Allison, Lemon, and Killerbrew. Ralph is calling for somebody out of the bullpen, a left-hander. He gave the signal with his left hand. who will be coming out. Bobby Stan is coming on as Ryan Duran picks the four men did not get anybody out. He walked three and gave up a base hit. Ryan Obertoya is being called out to bat for Dan Dobek. Boy, the managerial wheels are really spinning right now on both teams. Look, Lavagello is just about clearing his bench this inning. And Ralph House trying to counter attack with the switching of pitches. Shirley was quite reluctant to leave the mound. He figured he still had his good stuff. And, of course, Ralph Hauck, who is managing in place of Stacey Stengel, who is laid up with a virus, figured that Curly might be tiring and called for the switch. Bobby Stearns coming on 5'6", 154 pounds, making his eighth appearance of the year. He's won none and lost one. Ryan Duran leads the mound. Stan's being called on to try and stop a sudden uprising by the Washington Senators, who had come into the ninth inning, trailing the Yankees three to nothing. But Julio Betcher led off with a hover. Ryan Duren came on, walked Al Narragon and Faye Thornberry. Then El Navallo, pinch hitting for Ed Clevenger, singled up the middle to drive in and Narragon. Billy Gardner walked. The bases are loaded with nobody out. Dan Dobek was due to bat, but Cookie Lavagetto has inserted Reno Batoya, a right-hand hitter to face Bobby Chen. And it's a three-to-two ball game. Now let's see how the Yankee infield will handle this situation. Now Kubek is playing back at shortstop. Richardson back at second. Hadley back at first. And McDougal playing just about even with third base. All right, Reno Batoya steps into the batter's box. Batoya is batting 263. base hit all the area. Six runs, five and in. Fifteen for fifty-seven. Infield playing back. Here's the windup. The pitch to the toy is swung and a missed strike wide. Reno went for the shot breaking curveball down below the knees. On deck is Bob Allison. Bases are loaded. Here's the windup. Serving the dirt, ball one, one and one. Stan is trying to pitch low to get the toy to hit the ball in the dirt. Billy Gardner is at first base. Billy Consolo at second base. Faye Thornberry over at third base. The Yankees lead 3-2 in the top of the ninth inning with nobody out. And a 1-1 count on Reno Victoria. Out of 
Jones has started for the exit, but they're all going back to their seats now. Here's the windup. Here, top to right field. Tagging up the Strawberry Lake has missed the pass. Here comes Strawberry. The throw is going to be bad. And all runners are down. That's the Lopez. Try to throw that ball all the way in on a fly, which enabled the runners at first and second to move up. And the throw was way down the third baseline, about 10 to 15 feet down the third baseline. Strongberry to score, it's a sacrifice fly, and an RBI for Betoya tying up the ball game. But now the Senators have the uh, lead run down at third, and they're going to give Allison an intentional pass to load them up again and take the Jim Lemon. That run is shot to Ryan Durant. So Bob Gurley, who started the ball game, can either be the winning or losing pitcher. Ryan Durant cannot be the winning pitcher, but could be the losing pitcher. And here's the fourth ball being served up to uh, Bob Allison. Allison gets an intentional pass, loading them up again. Ralph Hart now is coming out to the mound. As Jim Lennon, a big right-hand hitter, is due to bat with Harmon Killebrew to follow. And maybe we'll get a right-hand pitcher coming on. Yes, they want another pitcher. Toya hit to right field was not hit too deep. A good throw and it would have been a mighty close play at the play at the plate. Not saying he would have gotten him or not. And uh, Edgar Lopez, of course, trying to make a good throw, was a little over anxious and threw the ball all the way in on a fly. And uh, that throw at third base. Johnny James is coming on. The fourth Yankee pitcher of the game and the fourth Yankee pitcher here in the ninth inning. Surely pitched the one man in the ninth inning. Gordon to four men, chance pitch to two men, and now Johnny James is coming on. All right, Lemon steps into the batter's box. Johnny James ready on the mound. Here's the windup. The pitch is a curve low outside, ball one. Lemon is the eighth man to bat for the Senators here this inning. The pitch is a record right now. Ryan Duren for the Yankees, and Tex Clevenger for the Senators. Here's the pitch. A ground ball of third, and a jungle up with a step on third. Throws the first double play. Oh, he made the out of double play ball. Hit the deal in the jiggle. Bill caught the ball, stepped on third, and threw the first. And we go into the bottom of the ninth inning with the score tied. 3-2. Three runs on just one base hit. No two base hits. Check that. A homer by Becker and a single by Vallo. No Yankee errors. Two men left the score at the end of eight and a half innings. Washington three and the Yankees three. Well, you know, even though that Todd Durst may be performing well today, future couple may be building up without you even knowing it in the carburetor. The exhaust fumes and other air contaminants that filter through your air cleaner can form deposits on the carburetor wall. The result? Loss of power, rough idling, and gasoline waste. But there's an easy way to prevent this right now. Just use new Atlantic Imperial gasoline. The gasoline that actually cleans your carburetor as you drive. For smooth, even performance all the time, it's Atlantic Imperial. The gasoline that cleans your carburetor and keeps it clean. Suddenly, a tie ball game after a long top of the ninth inning in which the Senators got free. And it finally took J uh, Johnny James to come in and come up with just exactly what the Yankees needed. And that was the double play ball. Then Polo has gone to short. The pitching ball to the Alto. Al Maragon will take over the catching duties. Clay Stoneberry has gone to right field. Centerfield. John Lee is coming out to pitch. So there have been changes in the Washington lineup as we now have a brand new ball game as we go into the bottom of the ninth inning. That's the ball game hits the three hour mark. Bobby Richardson, Johnny James is scheduled to bat, and then Johnny Kubek. Down 
three nothing first. Right call. Then if we start the third battle and start the first base, but he's in mid-air, so to speak, and he's back in the batting box now, ready to go. Three and one to count. Three one pitch. Strike right two for being through the count. And the payoff says, third low outside, there's the Johnny Jr. didn't want to give him anything too good to hit up. And left him. And that brings up Julio Garcia, who lined the left, hit a no double play, single and homer. He started things off in the ninth inning. He's going to try to bat and take the pitch inside. He almost hits him ball one. But there looks down at Ellis Clay, touching the third. McDougal was really in on that there that time. Adley is holding first. And then Phillip will ready to charge in. Check by James. The pitch is batted. A good one. They'll have to go to first base to throw. The Richardson in time to get the there. Moving the second on the sacrifice of Phillip. Well, that was a good point. It rolled almost dead on the first base line. Play going from the first baseman to the second baseman covering. The lead run is in scoring position, and here's Hal Narragon, who was used as a pinch hitter in the ninth inning and walked. One out. Yankee outfield, serve and left, Mantle and center, and left base and right, not playing too deep. Here's the stretch. The first is a curve low ball one. The Jiggle, Tugas, Richardson, and Hadley on the infield. Howard Sacking and Johnny James, the fourth Yankee pitcher of the day, out on the mound. Playing the top of the tenth inning. Pitch is hit on the ground at second base. Richardson in on the big hop. Goes to Hadley to retire now. John moving the third to Silver. Rondo, who was using the pink hitter and zero base on balls and came around to score in the ninth. But Google and Howard talking with James now out on the mound. The strategy working overtime in this last part of the ball game. Changing of uh, hitters, changing of pitches. Three, three to score on the top of the fence, two out. Then the batter. And still a do over at third base. Wind up the pitch to Thornberry is a on a double is Faith Lando. He broke his bat, hit it right off the end of the bat. And the bat goes almost in two, just over the Google's head inside the foul line. And the Senators take the lead, four to three here in the top of the tenth inning. And that brings up Billy Controllo. Two out, and a runner down at second. And here's the stretch, the picture controller, curve inside ball one. Billy batting 218, has a double, a triple, two homers, and eight runs batted in. Two men are out. Pitch is foul to the left of the plate, right in the center of the dugout, strike down, one on one. The 
the pitch is hit on the ground, it's short. Two back up with it, a long throw. In time to get Concello. The four to Senators in the top of the tenth, they score one run. And one base hit. No Yankee errors. One man left to score at the end of nine and a half innings. The Senators four and the Yankees three. You've got proper mixture of gasoline and air, and you'll enjoy smooth engine performance, greater gasoline economy if you use the gladdest and stereo gasoline to keep your car on the go. Screen TV's meet tomorrow afternoon in the Memorial Day double hotter, starting at 1.30 p.m. Seth Stobbs and Pedro Ramos will be picking for Washington against Rob Perry and Art Dittmar for the Yankees. And all that screaming is for Mickey Mantle, who will lead off the bottom of the tenth. And Mantle has really led off in uh, two innings in two different games to get the Yankees started. We have it in the fifth coming of last night's game. And that started a barrage of Yankee walks and hits and runs. And he started off the sixth inning of this ball game with a homer in which the Yankees finally scored three runs on four hits. So Mickey's up there. He singled, struck out, homered, and flied the right field. 4-3, the center is laid in the bottom of the 10th inning. John Lee out on the mound. First pitch to Mickey. There's a swing and a miss, strike one. And up hits the Lopez with Elston Howard to follow. Ground ball to second base, Gardner up with it. Over to Beck here, one away. Billy Gardner almost bobbled that ball, it popped out of his glove. One out, and here's Hector Lopez. Lopez doubled and walked. Took over for Roger Maris. One away, 4-3, the center is lead, bottom of the tent. is a straight ball. First ball on the inside part of the plate. Dave is over straight two balls. He came side on that time. And had to lean back away from the pitch and it broke over the plate. Side on first for a slice. No, whoa, hold it. Hold the phone there. Lopez okay, started his swing. The Paparetta's right arm started up. And he hurriedly pulled it down as he saw Hester Slipper swing. Three plus lashings that time. Lopez okay, started his swing. Lopez started his swing. Lopez started his swing. Lopez started his swing. Lopez Two strikes, one out, nobody on. The two two pitch curve way outside, ball three. First out on this for the payoff, push to Hector Lopez. Here it is. Ground ball over to put the shot out the center field, a base hit. Lopez gets his second base hit of the ball game. The first hit of John Lee on the eighth hit for the Yankees, and here is Erickson Howard. Howard single, back to third, back to short, and he's got an error. He's got back there hits in his ball game. They got three in the first inning, four in the sixth, and one here. In between, they were all hitless. And here's a stretch by Lee. 
Take the hard. Don't get turned in the mix. Yeah, he only had a start of that one. He really loosened himself up. Bringing a bat over his head. Picked up some dirt. Nothing in one the count. But they're holding first against Lopez. Here's a base hit to right field. That guy is around second. There's him at third base. And the Yankees now have runners at first and third with one out. And Bob gave the batter. Had a very good miss it. Gardner, Hang Harrison, and Don Lee. Captain Jim Jervis, the Yankees have run as a first and favorite one out. And the Kennedys lead 4-3 here in the bottom of the 10th inning. Jervis the battle with Ken Hadley due to follow. One third. He struck out, double, and then struck out again. Then field and double face up. Here's the stretch. The fifth, third, outside ball run. Right. Here's the pitch. Again, the stretch. The fifth, third, hit. Down the third, he's still third of the plate. He's out of the plate. At the left side, he's jumping up and down at her plate. A very close throw at the plate. As Killebrew caught the ball in back of the bag, made a high throw to Narazon, who had to come down quick to put the tag on Lopez sliding in. And Jake Paparella called him out. Field is choice from third baseman to the catcher moving the second was Howard. That first is third. And time is called. As Ken Hadley comes to the plate. There was that a close play. Here comes Chucky Lavis Yellow out to the mile. Oh man, it was a tough play for Killebrew as he was right in direct line with the runner coming down the line. He fielded the ball. Directly in back of third base, had a throw over Lopez's left shoulder. The throw was high. Maradona actually had a leap for the ball. Make the catch and come down and third Lopez. Hector had a good jump at third base, too. So now, with the center is leading 4 3, there are two out. Howard is his second. Serve that first. up for his first time in the ball game. He's batting an even 200. He's 2 for 10. Has one hammer and four runs batted in. He stands there to try and get out of here tomorrow. Talk about action. Two men out. On deck is Joe McDougal. Stretch by Lee. The pitch. Strike one is swinging a miss. <laughs> Lee took the sign from Maragon. Howard Lee drops second. Serve her first. The pitch. A low ball one, one and one. Senators lead 4-3 here in the bottom of the 10th inning. Here's the stretch. The pitch is a ground ball. Hit the second. Down the pitch the ball. He's fouling the ball. And now he's escaped. Here's the stretch. Oh, Lee 
car, the easiest car travelers have probably all year. He tried to play it too safe, and he really took that ball with his knees. Well, hands are safe. The bases are loaded with two out of the batter, Gil McDougal. McDougal has walked right past the third and fly the right there. Remember the ground of Hadley hit to Nellie Fox, and the situation similar to this, Fox battled it. All right, here's the wind up by Lee. Hit to McDougal, a foul out of place, strike right one. Strike on McDougal, base is loaded, two out. The wind up. Hey, the goal to stretch two ball. Nothing in two to count. Here's the wind up. The kick, high and tight, almost a wild pitch as we try to put a little extra on that one. One ball, two strikes. One ball, two strikes, two out the windup. The kick, third, hit down the first straight line foul. Kick foul, he is off the end of his bat, had a lot of English on it. Baseball thrown out in a play. Here's the wind up by the big right hander. The pitch. A little bit high ball two. Now he's on Saturday off off the field. He handles that play. Two and two to top. Two balls, two strikes, two out, and the base is loaded. The Yankees lead one to try and two to win it. Please take a look at how it over third. Here's the windup. The pitch. A foul going out of play. Now it's on station off, but it hits the top of the upper deck. Joe Paparella just left home plate, and the Google flips the mask back to Narragon. And the tension is mounting in this ball game. Out at third. Serve at second. Hadley at first. Two men are out. Here's the wind up. The pitch for high and side almost hit Gill in the head. Ball three. Three and two. Down to a full count. Two balls, two strikes, two out. The base is loaded and Washington leading four to three. Here's the wind up. The pitch. Two four. He's walking. McDougal's no balls and two strikes. John Lee finally left in the fourth in the turn run. Here's Bobby Richardson, who's at the four. To pitch to Bobby. A ground ball to third. Killer go up with his steps on the bag. That's there. But the ball game is tied up. To the Yankees in the bottom of the tenth inning. Run run. On two base hits. Run center to error. And three men left ground base to score at the end of the tenth inning. Washington for the Yankees for and repairs for station identification. You are tuned to 1460 on the radio dial. This is WOKO, Albany, New York. 27 minutes and 25 seconds after 5. The temperature is 75 degrees. This is your station for music, news, and sports. We're 
flying into the 11th inning. The Yankees at the serve and left, Madeline in center, Lopez in right. McDougal, Kubert, Richardson, and Hadley on the infield, Howard Tyson and James Pickens. That's the Yankee lineup. And let's see for the Senators, who will be leading off. Usually it's a fellow who makes a great play to end an inning leading off, but this time it's Billy Gardner who booted an easy ground ball to set up the walk for McDougal to allow the tying run to score. Gardner, one of the uh, purest fielders in the big league, which only goes to prove again, you never can tell in the ball game. All right, Billy has walked double, fly to left, bounce to third, and walked again. One for three, Johnny James. Things in a curve over strike call. Here <laughs> for the score. Curve, low ball one, one on one. The pitcher is due to bat match. Pitch. Right to swing and a miss. The sun is breaking through. After a long cloudy afternoon, the lights are on here at Yankee Stadium. The pitch high and sun ball two, two and two. like with only one game on Sunday, Mike get home and trying to eat dinner with the kids. But let's see, we've been playing three and a half hours now, right, Pete? Three and a half hours. And it's not over yet. Third high inside, ball three, two and two. The ground ball hits to the third. McDougal can't get it. Throw back up with first to first. Throw back first. McDougal throw that ball down just enough, enabling Gardner to beat it. Gill got his glove on the ball. It goes as a base hit. Two back was there. But, of course, McDougal trying to make the play. It's an infield single. Second hit off Johnny James. And that's going to bring up the pitcher, Don Lee. One for seven is the battle, batting 143. The Senators have just about used up all their pink hitters. Thank you, Inter, looking for the bunt. It is better in the air, and the Cougar makes the catch. No chance for the double play. Bill had ideas of stopping that ball. But it was better a little too hard. So it's one away. Bob Allison, who struck out, fly to center, bounced to short, back to short, and walked. Then away. Curve over, strike call. Ken Hadley holding first against Billy Gardner. Joe Caparello takes a look at the ball, says it's all right, keeps it in first. on Bob Allison, the road side, 4-4 in the top of the 11th. One out. Billy Gardner leading off first base. This is Bunnett. Wait a minute, foul there. It must have hit Allison's foot. It eventually landed there. Allison started, stopped, started again, and then Joe Paparella held up both hands, yelling, foul there. Nothing in two on Allison. He had McDougal deep at third. Could have walked down the first base that he bunted there. Here's a check by James. 
serve outside. Harris left the throw down the first. One ball, two strikes. Good lay outside. Nice back end shot by Howard on an almost wild pitch. Two and two to count. One out. He keeps his up in the air of the infield. McDougal and Richardson calling for it. Look out, man, and McDougal makes the catch. Two out, and here's Jim Lemon, who hit into a double play with a bases loaded and one out in the ninth inning. First and Lemon the batter. Here's the stretch. Curve, strike called. Now leading off first base. Green set. Third with foul outside of third. One ball, two strikes, time on and two out. Johnny Jordan for Washington in the top of the 11th. No runs, one hit. The Yankee here is one man left score at the end of 10 and a half innings. Washington four and the Yankees four. Remember, keep on the go with new athletic imperial. The gasoline that cleans your carburetor as you drive and keeps it clean. Look at the scoreboard again. In the American League, Baltimore defeated the Red Sox 6-1 in the first game. The second game is tied 1-1 at the end of four. Kansas City leads Chicago 4-2 at the end of six. And Detroit defeated Cleveland in the first of two, 6-5. In the National League, Pittsburgh over Philadelphia 8-5. Cincinnati defeated Milwaukee 4-2. The Dodgers shut out the Cubs 4-0. And the Cardinals are leading the Giants 4-1 at the end of five. have played three training games up till today. Two of them were 10 innings, the other one 11. So this ties along the test training game the Yankees have been in, and the Yankees have yet to win that game that has gone beyond nine innings. They lost eight to three to Chicago, five to one to Cleveland, and three to two to Cleveland in extra innings. Now we have a team hitter for Johnny James. John Blanchard. Batting for Johnny James. This is Branch's first at bat this year. He and Jordan A.C. have not been to bat. All right, Don Lee first pitch to Branch. There's a ground ball. Hits him off the foot right back to the box, and Branch is down at one knee. He fouled the ball right off his foot, and Branch was down on one knee. 
flew through to first base just to play first anyway. Bill Caparello looks at the ball and keeps it in play. have been pretty well emptied today. <laughs> one strike push. Low, ball one, one, one. Here's the one, one delivery. A ground goal of Beth Garrett first. He's up with the greatest of the best for the unassisted putout. Blanchard hit the ball hard on one hop to Julio Becher. And that brings up Tony Kubek. Kubek singled, walked, bounced to second, popped to second, and fly to right there. Wow! First pitch to Kubek is low inside ball one. strikes on Kubek. John Lee into the windup. The pitch is hit on the ground at first base. That's all up with it. Races to the bear for the unassisted put out two in a row. And that brings up Mickey Mantle. Mickey has singled, struck out, hammered, fly the right, and bounced the second. Is low ball one. One nothing pitch is swung and a miss strike one. One one. Mickey wants the Rosenberg. The low first, flips it up to him. <laughs> one more, one strike on Mickey. Two out, bottom of the 11th, score side 4-4. Four, four. Nobody on. The pick is low, a ball two, two and one, and Mick almost sat right down on the ground as the right knee gave way. Pitch swings up on the outside corner, strike two, two and two. And <laughs> two balls, two strikes, two out. Hit, ground ball, hit slowly to first base. Back there, flips the lead. He's safe at first. Safe at first. was there to feel the ball, and it would have been an easier throw for Gardner, who could have flipped with his right hand, but there had a catcher with the glove, transferred to his bare hand and throw Lee, and Mickey beat it out. Hit number 10 for the Yankees, here is Hector Lopez, who is two for two since coming in the game, he double singled and walked. And let's see if Mickey will try and steal the bag. He has four stolen bases and four attempts this year. Here's a stretch. It's a fly ball. It's inside field. Long day. It's a home run for Hector Lopez. He wins the ball game. Oh, you like that Lopez? Right He's in the ball game. It's a fly. Hector Lopez goes from nowhere. Congratulate them. A tremendous team win for the Yankees. And for New York in the bottom of the 11th. Two runs, two hits, no center to errors. Nobody left. The Yankees won it in 11 innings, six to four. And while we're getting the totals ready, we'll tell you that a clean vibrator can increase your driving pressure.
Now, Atlantic Imperial gasoline actually cleans your carburetor as you drive. And keeps the thing, too. What about them, sir? The ball game. For the Yankees, six runs, 10 hits, no errors, 10 men left. And for uh, Washington, 10 runs, 8 hits, 3 errors, and 12 men left. The winning pitcher, Johnny James, who is now 1-1 one, one and lost, and the loser, Don Lee, who is 1-9 and lost one. And it's the first extra inning win for the Yankees this year. <laughs> 